On PM Express tonight, legal education reforms, exploring the contested options. And there's so many options on the table being considered right now as to how to deal with this big problem. Members of the uh, General Legal Council have in the last few days been meeting with uh, parliamentarians uh, following the mass uh, failure of, of students again, uh, out of more than 1,800 students that, that sat, only 120 uh, above that passed, which has become a big issue of uh, controversy. Revelations from the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee after the meeting last week, uh, you know, members of the, of the GLC has brought a different twist to this, including we know that the, the, this was led by a judge and they also went there with the uh, examiners. They claim that more than 50% of the students who wrote the exam deviated the first question, which in itself is a contested one. Um, they also found that some law faculties across the country were simply violating the terms of the accreditation. They found that many of the law faculties are simply not good enough. And so because of the poor faculties, they are producing poor quality students who end up failing the entrance exams, and they put the blame squarely there as well. Um, in the wake of all that, a few of the um, country's known faces, very influential political figures have commented on this. These two gentlemen here have had their say, the former president and the second deputy speaker of parliament have all had their say on, on, on this particular matter. Uh, former president Jerry John Rawlings has also been speaking about this, criticized the GLC, talks about how his own daughter was a victim of the same uh, institutional failure. He calls it, says don't blame the students, blame the institution that is failing them. Um, the uh, Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee in Parliament, uh, of course, Ilusof Fusedi, who himself one time was a stunned critic of the GLC when it came to these matters. After listening to the GLC uh, last week, says that uh, he's convinced that the GLC may have a case. And a lot of the things that you're doing uh, are in line to fixing the, the problem. For the very first time, he's convinced uh, about the arguments and the explanations he's had from the GLC. He's on the show tonight. We'll see what really changed uh, his view there. Now, so why this whole fury surrounding this particular matter? Uh, just consider this. Uh, this year, only 128 students who sat the entrance exams passed. And now, uh, and this is out of 1,820 candidates. Um, this is mass failure by all, by all standards. Also, the GLC attributed the failure to poor performance of the students, although calls for them to re release student scripts have been ignored. If you say the students are that poor and they simply wrote terrible papers, why don't you produce these papers so we can all judge for ourselves? That's the argument. But the GLC has not done that. So tonight we'll look at the contested options. There's so many options, including legislative interventions. Two of them are controversial. One of them, the AG currently considering, that will empower the GLC and make it into an accreditation body to accredit the faculties. Two, there is an amendment before Parliament already, and Inusa will tell us more about this, which will, is designed to give quotas to the faculties to limit the number going into the uh, Ghana Law School so that if the Ghana Law School can take a thousand, only a thousand students will be trained and they have to sit and write the papers. And so that is also controversial. We will look at all this on the show. Uh, stay with us. When we return, my guests will be seated. I'll introduce you to them and then we'll get to looking at these contested options on PM Express. On PM Express this evening, my guest, uh, <coughs> Mr. Kweku Ansasari, he is a former uh, director of the Ghana School of Law. He is currently the dean of the law faculty at Mancrest University. Uh, thank you very much for your time here on PM Express. Also with me is Inusa Fuseni. He is a Constitutional Legal Affairs uh, Committee ranking member and a minority spokesperson on, on those same issues, constitutional, legal, and parliamentary affairs. And Mr. Fuzini, I'm thankful that Thank you, you joined us. Thank you. Uh, I want to start with you because you recently, uh, your committee has been doing some work yeah. on this area. Mm. You said something that fascinated me because your position 
on this matter is very well known. Yes. It was only after that last week meeting with the GLC that your position changed. Yeah. Why? You had been my, a, a stunned my, critic. My position has not changed in substance. I still hold the view that the problem at the Ghana uh, Law School, or Ghana School of Law, as pro properly called, uh, is a system problem. Mm. That for a very long time, the Ghana Law School was established to deal with students produced by the University of Ghana. That the highest number of students that came out of the University of Ghana and gained direct admission into the Ghana Law School uh, was between 60 and 80. Mm -hmm. Now, because the Ghana Law School had built structures and those structures needed to be filled with students, they even elected to run courses to, to supplement whatever uh, I mean, uh, 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 shortfalls they had in student population. That is, to occupy the spaces that were available. Mm -hmm. And that, that was why they, they ran the part one and part two. Now, now we have almost all the public universities offering law. We now also have liberalized the provision of legal education and so private schools, like schools established by my own uh, lecturer, civil procedure, and Sasari, are now a, a, a lecturer and teaching students in law. It means that the structure that was put up in or around 1960 for the purposes of training lawyers can no longer contain. So you have the physical difficulties of accommodating this large number of students. So the model that was used in 1963 ought to change. So that position has not changed. That is my position. It is also my position that the law, General Legal <coughs> Council cannot be a regulator and a player. That is what is combining to produce the suspicion that they are intentionally, by design, limiting the intake of students. And that, that discretion so vested in them is being abused in such a way as to make other students or potential students not have access to their examination results and even can, cannot question the way their scripts have been marked. Mm. And so you need to constitute the General Legal Council as a regulator, okay, and hive off the law school. So the law school now becomes a player like all other players. So that position has not changed. Mm -hmm. Now, when the General Legal Council appeared before us, they appeared to be saying the things that we have been saying. Which is? Which is? Which is what you just applied. Which, which is what, what we just said. Okay. They said, like, look. Uh, Duce said, look, what is happening at the law school is a planning problem that they ought to have planned long ago in anticipation of the numbers. Mm. So, and that's what we have been saying. Mm -hmm. Now, it says that, look, it's also because there is no effective regulation that some institutions offering law or legal education do not have the requisite faculty they don't have the facilities <coughs> and nobody supervises them over teaching that is the implementation of the curriculum and that you needed the general legal council to be constituted into a regulatory body to ensure that stu schools or institutions that want to offer law meet a certain criteria in short the general legal council must be able to set standards mm. okay for persons who want or institutions who want to offer law. Which, and, they, and they told you that the bill before AG currently seeking to do that. And they said there's a bill before the AG, AG seeking to do that. So we said they should, they should expedite action on the bill. Because so they also told you, because they also found that apparently <laughs> faculties are also to blame for the poor quality students. Good. Because you know we have always said that even though Chief Justice says that mass production will be 
at the expense of quality, we have always argued that mass production and quality are not mutually exclusive. Mm. And that and to uh, ensure or assure quality, you must look at the process at the beginning of the process. And Mr. Altasara will tell you that long before uh, 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 we came to the law school, they had gone through some selection process to ensure that only the best students mm -hmm. entered the faculty of law. Okay, so there was that process. And that was why from the law school you were on your way, from the law faculty you were on your way to the law school mm. because there was that quality control at the faculty. Now there is no quality control. There's no quality control at all because all the faculties and the schools are admitting and they have their admission criteria and nobody knows who they are admitting. Now they are not running, they are not running courses part time. Some of the courses are part time, <laughs> evening, contact hours are reduced. I mean, I, uh, my, my, my son just told me that he doesn't know what they call, uh, we used to call it, uh, uh, oh, this uh, uh, program that you will have, tutu tutorials. 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 He doesn't know tutorials. When I said, look, you, you know, when you, they finish teaching you, you must prepare for tutorials. And if you don't understand any question, you go during tutorials, Raise it. He said, no, 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 no tutorials. I said, okay, if you don't know tutorials, how do you, because you are running a three-hour credit course, so how do you complement? He said, we don't know tutorials. I mean, what happens is that at the end of the, uh, the, uh, the semester, they bring us together, and they just tell us what they expect us to do. Is in it one of the private schools? It's not a private school. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a private school. <laughs> then, then, I said, then I said, oh, then if you don't have tutorials, <coughs> what we did again, was the formation of study groups. Mm -hmm. We were encouraged at the, at the law school, at the faculty, to form study groups. You were in the Ghana, were the University of Ghana? Ghana. Okay. And, and he said, oh, most of us are workers. And so nobody has time for that. I was not testing the hypothesis, but I was just trying to understand what was happening. What's happening. So that and, is why. And what, my, what, my, what my son told me was to confirm what the, lo, the lecturers, to a very large extent. What the GLC told you? Told me. And because he also found some, in terms of mm -hmm. answering the question that became very controversial. Now, so we told some, them. Some shocking we said, uh, so I, I took them on. I took them on on that. Uh, I said, look. On which one? On the 7%. I said, anywhere in this world, if you conduct exams for your students after taking them through the program, and only seven percent of your students pass, then that's, that is telling enough for you. But they showed you evidence that oh, the students deviated. So, they said, the so then that was the answer now. They didn't show me evidence. Okay. And I said, so taking them through, they said, yes, that's true. They said they were as worried as the general population of Ghana, worried about the outcome of the exams. And so I asked, so if we're worried, did you do an, an examiner's report did the examiners do a report to inform you of what happened in the exam? They said, yes. Okay. So did you make the, the report available to students? They said, reports are not meant for students. They are meant for the institutions. Okay. I said, so have you made the, the report available? Even though I, I disputed that fact, because well, I said when I was in secondary school, uh, I don't know how, but we came by West Africa examiner's report uh, to guide us in our studies. They said, yes, in your secondary school, your school, which was given the examiner's report, probably made the examiner's report available to you mm. as students. But examiner's reports are meant for the institutions. Mm. So, so, so I asked the General Legal Council whether they have the examiner's report. They said yes. They said they have the examiner's report. Mm. And some and of the so details were shared with you, including the fact that the students deviated. So, 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 so what was contained in the examiner's report? They said. The head, the chairman of the Independent Examiner's Council, is there a council authority? The body. The body then said about 60 percent, 50 percent of the students filled in the first question. Because it was they a deviation. deviated. Whereas they were asking about the sale of booze after they went and they were talking about contract. <laughs> and so that, that's what he said. And the one that shocked me, I heard from you, is the one about. Oh, but you know, the Ghana, yeah. they said, and they said, he said it. I'm not, I was not making it that up, up for them.
that when University of Ghana, and they said they didn't attend the University of Ghana. Uh, so that was a preamble. <laughs> well, yes. But they were attacking the preamble. preamble is one of the question. So, <laughs> but he said it. So I said, oh, well, if that's the case, <clears throat> then probably they have a point. Because it's not as if to say they didn't answer the questions to their satisfaction. They deviated. And if you deviate a question, what can you no, do? Nobody can help you. Nobody can help you. So and, it, and if they said six, about 60% deviated the question, then that's about 800 students already. Yeah. Okay? And so if the rest... So you, you left that meeting with an understanding that you cannot blame wholly the GLC for what was happening, that the students and the quality of the faculties are also at the heart of the problem. No, I left the meeting convinced that the General Legal Council had appreciated the problem we are talking about all And they're taking steps to fix it. Fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sassari, yep. your reaction to all that. So this is for the first time we're hearing the GLC, the examiner's point of view on the matter. Um, what's your own take on all that you've heard? Uh, thank you, Ivan. I think for the first time I'm beginning to appreciate the source of the problem. From what... Uh, he Mr. has just said, yeah. it seems to me that um, the institutions, let's say parliament and the general legal council themselves seem to have forgotten the vision Kwame Nkrumah had in introducing and promoting legal education in Ghana in the first place. Now, my friend, uh, I'll take, you know, two uh, things that he has said. I agree with him that the GSC can't be a regulator and a player. At the same time, I agree with him that, you know, the GLC, that the General Legal Council seems to be abusing the discretion, you know, um, bestowed on them. I agree with But then, I'll take BA, you know, one by one. First on the admission of students from Legon into uh, the Ghana School of Law. Historically, that is not accurate. In, just before independence, it was felt, not only in Ghana, but the Commonwealth felt that, that the British Empire, they felt that the, their colonies in Africa must have you know, um, legal education. So various committees, were set up. In Nigeria, it, it was the Answorth Committee. In Ghana, it was the LCB Gawa, you know, committee. Now, in the case of Ghana, Professor Gawa, uh, Professor Zelman Cohen, and Professor Atta Sutherland, they, consisted, they constituted a committee, you know, to make proposals for establishment of um, a system of legal education in this country. So the first uh, legal institution that was established in 1958 was the Ghana School of Law. Now, let me take this opportunity to outline the vision of Nkrumah and therefore the, the broader objectives of legal education. One, Nkrumah wanted an increase in the supply of lawyers as part of his Africanization policy increase in supply, so establish a, a, a system of legal education. The second broader objective was to afford Ghanaian workers the opportunity of studying law part-time so as to increase you know, the lawyer population and to meet thereby the manpower requirements of the nation. And then the third broader objective as to the establishment of the Ghana School of Law was to give Nkrumah some political advantage in diluting the, the, the quality of lawyers trained abroad who were coming the lives of uh, Ekufuado, Van Lee, uh, Antechi, those abrafo, abrafo, abrafo lawyers. That let's produce our own lawyers. You know, so that you know his hands could go around all of them because he was afraid of you know the uh, foreign trained lawyers. These were the three broad objectives. 
why in coma and in coma use Geoffrey Bing, then the attorney general, to champion you know the ideals of the provision of legal education in this country. If we lose sight of these three ideals, we will always go wrong. In other words, we are not even historically, we are not putting in, um, our modern requirements into histor historical context. We'll get it wrong. So the law school was established 20th November 1958 in a small you know, space in the then Goku Supreme Court building. How many applied? 600. 1958. How many were shortlisted and enrolled? 123 <laughs> on 20th November 1958. Before Christmas 1958, some had abandoned the program, some had withdrawn for obvious reasons, some had been transferred, leaving 97. So in come January 1959, only 97 out of 123 who had been admitted were so you know, uh, re being regarded as continuing uh, law students. That was 1959. Now, out of the 19, out of the 97 who entered or ushered in uh, the year 1959, only nine passed the final exams in 1963 yes. and were called to the bar on 22nd June 1963. Mm. In the meantime, in April 1959, the Professor Gawa Committee had recommended that Ghana must also have a law department. And therefore, in October 1959, 25 students were admitted into the then Department of Economics you know, as part of you know, um, the attitude to the pedagogy issue. Yeah. You let them do liberal arts. So 25, that's the clue JM Co. Now, those 25 students, only 17, you know, were able to complete uh, the program in 1964. So, 1959, the law faculty. 1962, that law department metamorphosed into the faculty of law of the University of Ghana. Therefore, in 1963, the academic program of the law school was transferred from Makola to the University of Ghana. Then it became University of Ghana Law School. So people, like generations like uh, my good friend B.A., grew up you know, to know only the University of Ghana School, and therefore thought that that was the one single institution. No, there were two different institutions. When Legon was established, that the Faculty of Law uh, in Legon was established, the General Legal Council then decided that their mandate was not to train law students. Their mandate was to provide continuing legal education, which is something that present generations of you know, members of the General Legal Council you know, have lost sight of. Either they are ignorant of it or they don't even know. So the law school is not supposed to be training law students. Not at all. The law school's main or principal function is to deal with students who have been certified proficient, you know, and therefore, you know, uh, qualified to practice. They are the people. Number two, to train magistrates. And then three, you know, some non-statutory programs like pro police prosecutors program. All these things can be found in the minutes of the first three meetings of the General Legal Council from 20th November 1958 to the end of December. They should go and look at the minutes of the first three meetings of the General Legal Council. Then they will understand and appreciate. Therefore, you know, we, we've, we've been adopting the wrong approach you know, to finding solutions to legal problems in this country. But this functions that you stated, the GOS is a creation of law? The G yes. By under Act 32. So, so what, what is the stated object of the GLC under that law? The, the GLC in Section 1 of, the, uh, of Act um, 32. As far as, when it, as far as it comes to Act, legal education. Yes, Act 32 you know, is the body responsible for the appointment of the director of legal education and, and also the director of the law school. So you were once in their employ? 
sure. You know, and, and therefore, when they appoint the director of the law school, then the director in turn will appoint, mm. you know, the other officers, mm -hmm. you know, of the law school. So the GLC's, you know, main function, you know, in relation to uh, legal education, mm -hmm. the appointment of the director of legal education, then section 13 of the, prof the Legal Profession Act, then mandates the General Legal Council to set up a system so they establish the Board of Legal Education. Then Section 14, you know, deals with the principal functions of the General Legal Council. Now, that council, what they, they, it, it can do and what it cannot do can be obtained or gathered from the forward to the 1959 Ghana Law Report. Mm. So if you take the Ghana Law Report, the rationale behind the establishment of the General Legal Council is captured in the foreword uh, authored by uh, Sir Akukosa, mm. the first chief justice and therefore the first uh, chairman of the General Legal But having Council. said that, we are in the current situation where yeah. this has become a topic of the show on the back of all the failures that we saw recently. Yeah. He just told you what the G General Legal Council and the examining body had found was the issue. That is not a problem with the GLC, is it? And from what, they had, what has been found, Students are poor, faculties are not good enough, and it's producing all these problems with the students who come to the table when it comes to the entrance exams, and they fail. Yeah, it, it is because uh, we, are, we are failing, you know, to appreciate. If you say faculties are poor, you are roundly condemning the lecturers. You are condemning the non-teaching staff, and you are condemning the students. When we say faculty, is all embracing yeah. mm -hmm. now Ghanaian law lecturers are comparable anywhere in the world i mean let, let go to legon they are there uh, ashikote you know who just moved um, to the bench as supreme court judge very good lecturer professor herita mensa bunsu kufi kwashiga let me just take three you go to um, gimpa uh, Bonzi Simpson is there. Dennis A.J. is there. You go to Kumase, um, Lydia Pori in cancer, you know, their professor and dean is there. Uh, Kwame Frimpong, UPSA, Kwame Frimpong is there. We have very young and upcoming, very promising lecturers, Professor Atukuba, Professor, uh, well, I call him Professor, but he will soon be a prof, Peter. Uh, Who is it? What's his name? Peter uh, Atupari. Atupari. Brilliant Atupari. Atupari. Atupari, yes. How do you turn around to say that these, mm. you know, gems, his mate, uh, Atuguba, mm. is an icon in Harvard. And I, I'm, I'm proud, you know, that I, I was associated, you know, when they, they, I taught them and I spotted him and, you know, asked him, you know, to go to Harvard. He's an icon there today. And we turn around to say, is bad. How do you explain then how f why 50 percent more than it is not deviation. true? In order to establish the you know veracity or otherwise of the claim of the General Legal Council, let them submit the scripts you know to remarking. Let neutral persons take hold of it. Let them. I can see how the anybody can. can apply for that. Yeah, anybody can see that one from Pond, you know, is a foul egg, and therefore his students. I am a very good teacher. I mean, I'm not boasting. So I, I don't accept the General Legal Council's, uh, you know, claim that, that our students. In any case, Mancrest Law students, where I teach, where I'm dean, scored 100 percent the professional law exams. Our first batch. How do you turn around to say they are bad when they talked? Mm. The second batch, we had over 90%. Go to the, 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 the course today, the interns, about 80% are from Mancrest. How then do you say that, you know, they, they, they are bad? They are not. Let me, mm -hmm. let me, you know, try to situate the problem. You see, uh, the, the problem as I see it is, one, we are out of touch with the historical realities. We are out of touch with modern realities. We are out of touch with the objective conditions on the ground. 
here we are, you know, we have some of the brightest legal minds. These, you know, young, young. Sometimes when I mark their scripts, say, I ask myself, could I have produced what? And then you turn around to say, so as Rollins said, let us blame the examiners. He just mentioned um, sale of goods and contract, and he said the examiner said the students, you know, uh, instead of um, answering the question on sale of goods, they're writing about contract. You see, sale of goods emerged out of contract. So both are transactions. Therefore, if you teach your students effectively and properly, before they answer, because they need to distinguish between both transactions that look like, yeah, yeah. but then they, 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 they diverge. Yeah, different factors. Do you see? Yeah. So if an examiner does not himself know or recognize that the two are almost the same, and therefore there's a need to differentiate between them, he will fail the student when he, the mm -hmm. examiner, you know, yeah. did I not mean, so, 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 that's not that's 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 so, yes. This is not a monkress <laughs> issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a monkress <laughs> issue. I, I, and I, I, you have taught me, and, and I will say that I, I would really enjoy you. And when you taught me, you, pa you, you pass, you pass me, but you fail students. It means that you sure. assess, you assess students. Sure. And so, okay, so, so it's not about one crest. And that's why I don't want to narrow the debate <coughs> and discussion. It's, it's, it's bigger, it's bigger than any. It's mm. bigger than one crest. Mm. Now, the remarkable. I agree. Apple, Apple out of touch. I agree with you because we have argued that. Mm. And we have argued that you can't use the model of 1963 to solve the problem of 2019. Mm -hmm. It simply cannot. <coughs> there are many more uh, people who can teach now. And the, law, the General Legal Council told us that they had interviewed and recruited close to about 19 lecturers to supplement the lecturers that they have. They've told us that they are <coughs> acutely aware that the law school here cannot provide the space, accommodation, and environment for continuing legal education consistent with modern trends. So they are thinking that as part of the provision of legal education, they're going to establish a law village. A law village and that they have already acquired the land. They said, look, when we got a, 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 a applications for 1,820 uh, applicants seeking to enter the law school, we knew that if we had higher <coughs> passes, there would be a problem. So we went around the institutions and we were able to secure accommodation for more than 1,000 people. For about 1,200 yeah. students to, to, to have legal education. So these are the steps that I say that listening to them, I think they were doing something to address the issue. But I clearly <coughs> I agree with you, except that even part-time workers must meet the standards. And you set the standards. You are... I mean, a trade blazer in legal education, mm -hmm. the provision of legal education in Ghana, and you set the standards. And so we cannot be seen to be reducing the standard. So we agreed that the standard must not be reduced. If you are a part-time student and you want to read law, you must perform to the to, to, to standard, to scale, so that when you finish <coughs> the law program, your clients can have better quality service. Mm. Now, I, another thing that when Kuruma said we must train part-time lawyers, he sought to reduce the standard. No. No. It was to maintain the standard. So we agree. We're just saying that for now, it appears to me that we need to do a surgical insertion and appreciate the issues confronting the provision of legal education mm. and we should not narrow it we can we can i mean even at the faculty yes <coughs> maybe at the faculty i came to meet a faculty in which i mean a program in which the law school and the law faculty were one and the same mm. 
Now, but even at the faculty, to just demonstrate to you that it is not somebody, it's a, a person who gets first class or second class upper who becomes a successful lawyer. Yeah. I mean, at the faculty, True. you have to enter with a certain I mean, uh, 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 aggregate. And you, your grade point average determines the class in which you will fall. And that people who had less than two were given passes. Passes. Now, some of those who passed, got to the law school, did not repeat. <laughs> your colleagues who passed, got to the law school, did not repeat. But some who got upper, repeated. Yeah. And repeated. So, so it just shows that there is more that goes into the training than what you went into with, mm. uh, into, a, into a program with. And so for me, and they also said, and it's not Legon, it's not Moncrest, it's not you, it's not uh, uh, Atopari. Mm -hmm. Okay? They said, look, we got documents from the accreditation board in which people had applied, institutions had applied to teach law. And they had used other people's documents to support the application for accreditation. Mm -hmm. And those people were not lecturers in those institutions. Yeah. And I want to take a quick break. When we return, we'll look at the <coughs> legislative interventions um, that has been proposed to fix a the problem. There are two main ones. There's one already before the committee, which is considering um, a quota system um, for the faculties coming into the Ghana School of Law. And there's a second one which he's already touched on, with the AG is looking at, which will give the uh, GLC uh, powers of accrediting faculties. Will these two fix the problem? And then we'll end with, uh, you know, we'll talk to Mr. Sansari himself, because he's recently got into some trouble with the GLC based on some comments he's made on the same matter as well. Where is he in trying to deal with that matter with the GLC? Stay with us. You're still live on PM Express. I still have in the studio uh, Mr. Sansari is a former director of the Ghana School of Law. He's currently the dean of Mount Christ University Law uh, Faculty. Uh, with me also is he ranking on the Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee in Parliament. Uh, Mr. Ndusafuse, let me come to you on, the, on, on two legislative interventions that mm. are currently hoping to deal with the thing. Let's start with the first one, which is already before your committee, um, seeking to amend the Legal Professions Act to yeah. introduce so, a quota so, system. So, 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 so that bill was brought in after we had amended the LI. Uh, to provide for the interview, re recall that the LI was taken to court. I mean, the practice at the law school was taken to court by Kweku mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, Professor Sari, Professor Sari, when the uh, when the introduced examinations and the uh, interview, which was not supported by the uh, legislative yes. instrument, and so uh, when the court ruled that their act uh, activity was unconstitutional, as it was not supported, uh, they came to court for us to ex expose. Uh, facto rationalize the, the the position. Then we said no. Uh, we could we, they should go and bring a comprehensive legislation to deal with the problems that we are facing. They said, well, if we didn't amend the LI for them to admit that year, then they will not be able to admit, and that will compound the problems that they were having. So we we decided to give them the opportunity uh, by removing the interview and allowing them to uh, examine and recruit. Mm -hmm. into uh, admit into the law school mm -hmm. now they then went because we had said they should bring a, a, a legislative uh, uh, amendment to the act to make it possible for them to uh, reform the law school they then went and brought an amendment that sought to limit admissions to the law school based on quota a quota system and the question the simple question is how are you going to dispute the quota what fairness is it on based on the number of students admitted to each institution? Didn't or, the bill specify how? No, 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 no. They or, just or, or their buildings. Or their buildings. <laughs> what happened? It was, it was discretionary. <coughs> Two, why quota system? Quota system is another fetter into admissions. And that will build obstacles in the minds of the people. Because if Montrez is training 200, and you know that Montrez has a quota of 20, why would the 200 students come to your school in the first place? <laughs> so why do you build th those in the minds of the people? So we said no. So that was the reason why 
we do not work on the bill. We just thought that the bill would not address the problem. So, so by the fortunately, bill, you, huh? fortunately, when they came to us last week, Thursday, <coughs> there was unanimity of thought on that matter. To, to what effect? The General Legal Council, the Independent Examination Board, the... I mean, all of us agreed that that bill will not serve any useful purpose. So what happened to it? So we advised that they should come and withdraw it. Did they agree to withdraw it? They agreed to withdraw it, but they should expedite action on that bill that they spoke about. And the way they spoke about it, they, they, they brought a lawyer, the counsel to the independent examination body, who spoke to the bill, uh, who gave us the drafted instructions that she was given by the general legal counsel. And from the drafting instructions and the way the bill has been drafted, uh, on, I mean, if we would have seen the bill, if indeed the provisions she says are in the bill are actually in the bill, they will go a long way. But there, are, there will still be a bill, and so we will have opportunity to reform general legal education when the, such a bill is pr pr I mean, presented to us by input from the general public. Mm. You understand? Mm. But the, the most important thing the bill according to the council is second to do is to divide is to is to separate the provision of legal education from the regulation mm. and i think that will be a milestone okay mr so, so address that he so i think that has been resolved so that particular bill that was taking quotas which i know you were opposed to yeah. will be withdrawn they said there's an agreement there but there's a second one before the ag's office which is seeking as he said to make the glc into a body that will accredit faculties. What's your take on that? Wrong step. First of all, <clears throat> the Ghana School of Law, since its inception, inception in 1958, um, is not established by law. There's no... Has it not been? No. So it, it, it functions under the auspices of the General Legal Council. So its oxygen is from the GLC? From the GLC. Okay. So the, the, the law school itself is non-existent. Now, or not recognized by law? No. Okay. What Act 32 anticipated and directed the General Legal Council to do... Ah, so is the law school an illegality? Well, no, the no, General no, Legal no, Council no, no, is a legal entity. And therefore, yeah. you know, the law school is a unit oh, of, uh, of the, the General Legal Council. Legal council. Yeah. Okay. But where, uh, anyway, in of the, of the, law school. the law school is an administrative unit okay. of the General Legal Council. Anyway, Evans, 1970, Ghana needed. 1,000 state attorneys, 1970. Today, I don't know whether he has uh, an idea. They no, are less than, the, 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 less the than 300. The has complained. Less about than 300. Yeah. Mm. Less than 300. Mm. 1970, 1,000. Mm. 2019, mm. about 220. Mm. And we say to mass admission of lawyers? Wrong. Mm. We need more lawyers. Mm. Uh, now, let me take this opportunity again. Until 1990, Legon was producing not more than 50 law students mm. for the Ghana law to school. feed the Ghana oh. School of Law. Mm. And then the Ghana School of Law was running... Uh, part one, part two. Uh, no, was running a program known yeah. as the uh, Qualifying the Law QCL, Certificate, yeah. the QCL. Mm. And until 1990, we were mm. admitting between... Uh, 10 and 15 students. By some strange uh, events, I became, you know, I got the opportunity to act as director in 1992. And I increased the intake from 15 to 20. Mm. Now, 1997, I acted as director for 15 months. In November 1998, I thought that, I mean, it was not a good thing. The law school was about to celebrate its 40th anniversary with 30 students. So I increased intake to 40 in 1998. In 1999 to 50. In 2000 
to 75. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that we were still, you know, short of the manpower requirements. So I placed the memo before the General Legal Council, addressed the shortfall immediately. And, you know, the then Chief, uh, Chief Justice Urban, you know, said, so what do we do? It's like increase intake. Mm. So, okay, you are the director, go ahead. Mm. So I justified, you know, the increase from 75 to 100. By the time I was asked to step aside in uh, August 2005, the Romans had, you know, increased to 250. Mm -hmm. Now, this 250 operated for about 10 years until we made ugly noises that, look, 250 to serve a population of over 30 million, that was not good enough. Why, the, the reason why we are finding ourselves in this problem is because of the conservatism of some members of the legal profession. We are so conservative. My problem is because I didn't come from the, you know, identified pedigree. Established names. Exactly. I wasn't, you know, from anywhere. I don't want to mention any name. So they saw me as, you An know, so, yes. Until 2003, there was only one law faculty. So as director of the law school, I directed the opening of three more uh, law faculties. Tech. So yes. tech was established under my directorship. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting with Professor Adorbin, then Vice Chancellor of Cape Coast, opened a faculty, then named it after John Mensa Saba. Then I went to the north, ask regional ministers, the PNDC, they'll tell you, I will carry application forms from Accra to the regions, begging ministers, you know, to give me people to, because we need lawyers. Now, if I had come, presumably, from established names and backgrounds, I might not have done, but I see this, you know, as an opportunity you know, for people to penetrate this conservatism. So we must, Ghanaians must understand but isn't this that it's not, it's not the first time we're having this Isn't this kind of GLC amenable, open they to, are not. to do that? They are not. And they are not because the chairpersons after uh, Chief Justice Aqua have, you know, interfered, you know, with the function day-to-day -day operations of the law school to the extent that the, the director, the current director of the law school has become a lame duck. How do you know this? Oh, I mean, as a, as a, as a former, you know, director And in what of the specific school, ways have they dictated this? The current director of the law school has no role. The, what he has to do, the IEB is doing. So he doesn't take part, you know, in the setting of questions. He doesn't moderate questions. He doesn't take part in the marking. He doesn't even know, you know, what is going on. He is there, and then the IEB will do everything, and they go and place it on the lap of the chairperson or the general legal counsel, and that is it. I know this as a mm -hmm. fact because, you know, I, 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 I get... You, you need to clear this up for me. You, yeah. you, you've been very vocal on this matter. Sure. He's gotten into trouble with the GLC. Sure. What's the nature of their probing to you? Uh, well, I don't know. They, I understand, as I told you, was it uh, four days ago? ago yes. Uh, when I sought to ask, you know, about the nature, because I pointed out that GLC, you know, as a body, is not a disciplinary committee. They have a disciplinary committee, and therefore, if my invitation, you know, had. Um, uh, had come from the, G, the, the district committee of the GLC, no problem. But this one, it was the, ch the chairperson of the GLC, mm -hmm. then the... Judicial the, Secretary signed the, the invitation. Yeah, right? Judicial Secretary, then the most senior justice of the Supreme Court, then uh, Justice uh, Nyeba, you know, who are both members of the uh, district committee. Now, they invited me and had conversation with me, and I told them, you have initiated a disciplinary you know, so this is the disciplinary process that exactly. was started against you. For doing what? For making comments that they felt was unprofessional or mis or was I, I misconduct know. yourself? So I asked them, if, as we are, you know, conversing, this conversation, if you say something makes sense to you, and I say, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if, one th if 128 candidates pass um, out of 1,840, and, and it makes sense to you, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm. If I say it doesn't make sense to me, mm. 
Where so so, so they are, they are, you're looking into, because you have the power to look into your, because you're a lawyer, yes. you're subject to, yes. to that process. Yes. Is that why you're looking into it? Has it got anything to do with your professional conduct as a lawyer? That, that is, you know, so they claim. But, I mean, howsoever you look at it, I, you know, uh, spoke my mind. And I, I made it quite clear to them. You may not have, you know, liked the way I went about it. It may not have measured, you know, in elegance, in sobriety, whatever. But that doesn't constitute misconduct. Misconduct is defined in Section 56 of the Legal Profession Act. But you're submitting it's yourself to the, pro to the post process, the GLC's process. That I respected the invitation because I'm, I'm an employee. Mm. And the GLC, you know, my former employers, mm. it would have been, you know, utter disrespect if I hadn't, you know, honored mm. the invitation. But you go again. You, uh, this is not finished. Well, I, my second uh, appearance, I made it quite plain to them that they've boxed themselves into a corner that they should just drop this matter. And I also caution them, allow sleeping dogs to lie because... I went my, with my father. Whatever I say here, I have. There's a record. Of, I mean, this is sure. live on, on all the. Sure. Way. If you ask me to, you know, give you the history with figures, mm. I can produce everything. So, so, so just as to wrap up, yes. you will continue to go because they still, still say you should come before them. Well, I'm waiting for their next. If they write to me, you know, that uh, as you now appear before the district committee, then I know, you know, that. I mean, I shouldn't go again because otherwise, the first two that I, I went, mm -hmm. and they know that being the general legal counsel, being the 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 controllers of the district committee, they cannot be, you know, complainant, investigator, prosecutor, and judge in their own court. It's elementary. Every first year law student knows mm. this. Mr. Senek, tomorrow yes. you're continuing your probing. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock we'll be meeting the students. Uh, so, like I said, the, the meeting with the General, the General Legal Council, the Independent Information Body, uh, the Judicial Secretary, and, and, and some other persons uh, who all appeared before us yesterday, uh, I mean, on Thursday, clearly raised some pre preliminary issues preliminary issues of propriety in the way they conducted themselves. Now, so that's the side of the who, story. Who conducted themselves? The, the way the GLC okay. conducted mm -hmm. itself. So, but this is, uh, the, the, this is uh, an investigation into what happened in the law school. Mm -hmm. So we need to know whether uh, this prima facie uh, uh, propriety that uh, appeared to uh, envelope and surround the activities of G G G G GLC can be rebutted by the students. So we need to listen to them. Mm. Yeah. And your purpose, the whole goal of this whole The purpose of the whole goal is one, to secure the interest of the students and to, to ensure the sustainability of legal education in Ghana. So what in, 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 in that case, Evan, then there must be transparency. If indeed, to mm -hmm. secure the interest of the students, mm. other remarking of the script. Well, we, we, we demanded that. that. Well, we demanded that. We demanded that. And so, yeah. yes. And, uh, you you and demanded was, that of the GLC. the GLC? GLC, that look, if the students want to remark, will you do? They said yes. yes. But to what intent? Then I'm purpose? glad. Yeah, they, they we, we demanded that. No, but, but the, they already said the rule for remarking. The students have to pay 3000 Yes, the, the remarking is at the expense of in every institution. At the expense of the students. students. Yeah, so, yeah. But, the, but that doesn't change anything. The students by themselves can request for that. Uh, is that what you're asking for? The students already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, so they said they, will, they can they do the remark. We said, okay. that. we said that. After you met the students, will you meet some of the faculty members as well? Because no, no, they're also we part the of the yeah, stakeholder lesson. You see, after we meet the students, <laughs> then. Oh, yes, we are, what we are going to do is actually to organize two conferences. Okay. One in Accra and another in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. Because legal education is huge. What is happening? It is a this storm up of I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. It's tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So what is happening is we must get people together to to think out how we reform legal education and put it on a very sound pedestal. Okay, I think you've started something. We'll see how this goes. Mr. Yeah. Sorry, thank you very much for coming. Um, the process has started. Hopefully, they can yeah. get yeah. something out of it. Yeah. Uh, Inusa Fuseni is the ranking of the Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee, and I know um, there are many law students who have been sending me messages on the subject. It, 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 the, as you can imagine, there are thousands of them who are left in limbo currently. Uh, we'll continue having this conversation. We've been elucidated a bit about the processes and some of the interventions uh, that have been, have been. Uh, we'll see how this process goes along. We'll revisit it 
uh, once there are significant movements on the way forward, particularly when that AG bill that is currently being considered comes before the House. We'll all get to see it. We'll revisit that later on. Enjoy the rest of the day.